Good afternoon and welcome to Seniors Count. I am your host, Tula Mall. On our show, we believe that you are the foundation on which Boston was built. So our goal is to connect you to resources, benefits, and information to enhance your life. Thank you for joining us. Today we welcome Julie Miller from the MIT Age Lab. Welcome, Julie. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Oh, we lo we're so excited to have you. So why don't you tell us a little bit about the MIT Age Lab and the research that you do there? Great. So I'll start off by saying I'm a gerontological social worker by training. And at the MIT Age Lab, I have the great fortune of working with people in all different disciplines. So I get to work with people from urban geography, um, with psychology backgrounds, marketing, consumer behavior, engineering. And what that really brings us to is the intersection of how people make decisions, how people use technologies, uh, and how people cannot age, can age not just longer, but better. So the Age Lab um, is one of the labs at MIT, and we look at how um, people age in ways that are similar to ways that they did for a long time before this, but that are also different. Okay, so um, let's talk a little bit about the, the aging population. Um, so you constantly hear on the news that the, adult the older adult population is booming. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what's happening worldwide within the older adult population? So this demographic of people um, who were born in the U.S. between 1946 and 1964, those people are referred to as the baby boomers. And what we see as the impact of the baby boom are changes in how people utilize services in products that people consume and how spaces are and need to be designed. Um, and so what we see from this baby boom is a decrease in the number of people under the age of five and an increase in the number of people over the age of 65 and over. And so as we can see in the slides, um, we go from more of a triangle effect of more younger people and fewer older people to what looks more like a rectangle where we have more or less an equal percentage. Um, and that really creates disruptive demographics. Which means that along the whole age spectrum, so from baby to older adult, there's pretty much equal numbers of people along the whole Right, just want to describe for people. We're, so okay. we're seeing more equal percentages and wow. more equal numbers of the younger and older. Not exactly the same, of course, because that could okay. cause even yeah. more even more <laughs> issues. Um, but we we are certainly beginning to see the challenges and the opportunities that come with a rapidly aging population. What we also see is that older adults and the Generation Y generation. These are people in the age bracket of 18 to 30 something. That that is actually equaling out in the United States too. And so n now not only are we looking at the aging of the baby boomer population, but we need to be thinking ahead to the aging of Generation Y as well. And to talk a little bit more about that, what is happening with Generation Y? Why, why do we need to look at, at how they're gonna age? Well, in general, when we think about disruptive demographics around aging, we think about why that's happening. Mm -hmm. And we think about um, transformative changes in healthcare transformative changes in technology that allow people to live longer. So when we actually fast forward, let's say to 2050, and we think about the aging of Generation Y, we need to be thinking about things like school loans and credit card debt. We need to be thinking about things like caregiving and how Generation Y might be providing care for their parents who could be living on opposite coasts. Oh, wow. um, and so then in particularly thinking about disruptive changes um, in technology, it's amazing to consider the possibilities and also very important to think about how we need to adapt to those. So can you talk a little bit about some of the, maybe the research that's being done about how to adapt how, or how you know, people are planning on adapting uh, to this to the older population and then the Generation Y as well? We specifically at the MIT Age Lab believe in multidisciplinary um, modes of research. And so particularly at the lab, we're thinking about transportation. We're thinking about decision making mm -hmm. around finances. Um, we're thinking about medication management techniques. And so the ways in which we do research anyway are bringing in surveys, are bringing in focus groups, are bringing in things like the Dial Smith Perception Analyzer, in which we have groups of people come in and using a dial, 
either switch, I very much agree, okay. all the way to I very much disagree with what they're seeing on screen. Um, and so in that way, we can gauge moment to moment responses. Wow. Uh, so you start talking about the research at the MIT Age Lab. I know one of the other things that you guys work on are unique tools that support researchers in laboratory and in field environments, one of them being, I'm assuming, this dial, mm -hmm. right? Um, can you tell us more about other unique tools that you guys use? Yes. So one of the um, one of the main platforms in which the Age Lab has um, has kind of spread its wingspan over the years is through our research around driving and transportation. So we have several on-road vehicles um, in which subjects are um, are very are in a real live car mm -hmm. um, and have a researcher in the back seat, and we're tracking. Um, we're tracking heart rate, we're tracking skin conductance, so how people sweat, um, and we're conducting eye movements. And so in that way, we're able to get, as I said before, moment-to-moment -moment responses for how people deal with stress, mm -hmm. how people are distracted. And obviously, we can see how this might affect um, safety on road. Yeah, and so, yeah, so some things to think about for our, our audience is, so as people age, you know, part they, they change physically, their reaction times maybe, um, glaucoma may change the way they see, but I, I can understand people not wanting to give up the independence of their vehicles, right? And in a city like Boston, there's public transportation options, but that's obviously not worldwide. So it's interesting that you guys are thinking about um, how does you know, what are, what are reactions? So what does this, so in, when you think about that, when you've done research, what have you found? What we found is that conversations around independence and dignity and safety across the ages are really important mm -hmm. and can be really difficult. And so something that we really value at the lab is being able to have conversations with our sponsoring organizations about how to have those difficult conversations with clients. Mm -hmm. um, and so if it's insurance companies or um, if it's advising companies, how to effectively communicate with families and with individuals about how to make these transitions in life. Mm -hmm. Because as I mentioned before, we are aging longer. But the question is, how can we be aging better? So, And in the same... In the same angle, in do you guys work with um, companies like let's say a car company and thinking about how they build their vehicle to better, uh, you know, to maybe they want to focus their vehicle on older adults that 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 would have to be different. Maybe the reaction time of the car, or the car's got to learn how to sense what's happening with the person. Uh, is there anything like that going on? We do a lot of that work, and the ways in which we do that um, is through this interdisciplinary way in which we look at the work that oh, we do. Um, and so, as I mentioned, working with engineers, working with um, working with geographers and people in different disciplines um, is really the way to create that disruption and, and how to really listen effectively um, to changes that can be made. Very nice. What are some other tools that you guys are working on? I know there was um, a seal. Yes. Or like a petting kind of. <laughs> Yes. So um, the star of our show mm -hmm. is named Paro. Okay. And Paro is a robotic seal. Um, and people always say, why do you have a robotic seal? What does that do for research? Well, yeah. really what PARO um, is used for is during a period called sundowning um, that people with advanced stage dementia um, might experience. And that is a time of day towards the end of the day when people might get agitated or mm -hmm. frustrated, um, sometimes aggressive. And PARO is used to simulate maybe what it's like to have a pet, okay. but without the confusion of it being a real live pet because yeah. who has an actual seal in their home? Yeah, or the, the maybe not the danger but you know, pet wants to, you know, they want to move around, they right. wiggle, whereas this is just a stationary. Right. So Paro actually responds to your voice and responds to touch. Ah. And we've seen not just um, not not just with caregivers and not just for people with dementia, but that when we have visitors come into the lab, that they really respond mm -hmm. um, to something that they otherwise wouldn't think much of. Lifelike, yes. right? Yes. Very interesting. Yep. All right. Well, I know in the second half of our show, I'm going to be demonstrating Agnes. So why don't you introduce Agnes for us, um, and then uh, we'll be demonstrating her in a bit. Agnes stands for Age, Gain, Now, Empathy, System. Agnes has a YouTube video. She's very popular. <laughs> and um, I, I would encourage everyone to, um, to look her up. And, um, and Agnes really is meant to, um, to get people feeling empathy for what it means to age. People age in very different ways. Agnes is not, um, is not a one-size-fits-all. Um, but she is meant to, to stimulate people to think, how do I need to think about aging in different ways? And what are the ways in which businesses, spaces, products, and services need to be changed? 
Well, I'm looking forward to trying her on. So yes. uh, thanks for uh, th thanks for introducing her. Thank you very much. Separate raw meats from other foods by using different cutting boards. 3,000 Americans will die from food poisoning this year. Keep your family safer. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov. So welcome back. Um, I'm here today with Ariel Burstein. Did I say that right? Yes. Great. Uh, from the MIT Age Lab. And I have on Agnes that we were talking about before the break. So Ariel, why don't you tell us what, what's going on here? Absolutely. So. AGNES is an acronym. It stands for the Age Gain Now Empathy System. Mm -hmm. AGNES was designed by engineers and physical therapists to simulate what it feels like to have the impairments of aging. Um, AGNES was originally designed for engineering students um, who are great at designing but might not always be able to get into the psyche of someone who's aging mm. um, to better design for people who are aging. Interesting. So, um, all right, I guess let's do a demonstration so you can then we can talk about how what I'm feeling. I'm already feeling a lot. You're feeling a lot. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so there's different components of Agnes. Mm -hmm. Um, so as you, as you age, um, you, you lose ability, and it's not even just this cut and dry loss of ability, it's that it takes you maybe extra time to get down the street or to navigate those subway stairs in the, um, in the T. Mm -hmm. um, and that brings up friction, that can bring up frustration, and that can bring up fatigue. Um, so what we're trying to do is identify those points, uh, create different services and different products, um, to make life easier, to make, make life better. So the way that the suit works is it limits your mobility, which you're probably already feeling. Yep. Yeah. Um, and you can see that in the straps. Um, it also adds weight. Mm -hmm. So you have a weight on your back and weight at your wrists and as well as your ankles. So that adds fatigue. Yep. Um, also, um, the, the shoes are a large component of this. As we age, we lose the fat on the bottom of our feet. Yep. Um, and what you're feeling is that very, um, very sensitized uh, feeling as you're walking around. So you, you start to feel more than you would normally in your shoes. It can be very uncomfortable. It is very uncomfortable. Yeah. yeah. Um, and in addition to more, uh, gaining more feeling in your feet, we lose some um, haptic function. Um, and so, that's something and what is that? the glove. Explain that. Yeah, so haptic function is your, your sense of feeling. So okay. things that may once have been simple to, to pick up and grab yep. are now difficult to sort of get at. Okay. Um, the gloves also simulate arthritis. Um, they're weighted oh, at the okay. knuckles. Oh, okay, I was wondering. Yeah, yeah, my hands feel heavy. Yes. It's harder, it's more work to open and close them. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and then spinal compression. So there's a sort of um, bending this curvature of the back that you might be feeling that comes sort of from the head down. Okay. Um, and then the goggles yep. um, to sort on. of top it all off. Wow. That's completed the... Yes, that yes. completes the piece. Um, it can be very disorienting, of course, not to see. Um, these goggles simulate a disease process. Um, some sim simulate a regular aging process of the eyes, which mm -hmm. can be corrected with lenses. Um, there's also a, a slight yellowing of the eyes as we age as well. Okay. So, yeah, so I'll tell you, I'm feeling like, like I'm squatting a little bit, like I'm, I'm doing, using a lot of strength in my legs to kind of keep myself up. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, my feet are already hurting, and I've only been in the, your special shoes for, <laughs> what, five minutes? Not even. Maybe yeah. three minutes. The Crocs are not a style statement. Yeah, that's and for I sure. can imagine, I mean, I'm just standing. I can't imagine having to walk more than across this room with yeah. the, the specialness of the shoes. It's, it's, uh, it hurts. Do you want to um, move around or walk a little bit and yeah. see what that's like? Yeah, definitely. Okay. So I'll walk over. I'm going to cross you this way, and then I'll come back. Okay. So, wow, yeah, it hurts. It's yeah. like a night out in the heels. It's like a night out in the heels. <laughs> yeah, so it's slowing and you down. Sl yep. Definitely. Yeah, definitely slowing me down. And even my gait feels shorter. Yeah. Yeah, so. Yeah, so another thing that we try to simulate is um, this sort of loss of balance. Mm -hmm. um, and that's something that you'll feel in the shoes. So you might feel more unsteady uh, than yeah. you do usually. Wobbly. Also, um, sort of a shortened stride length, you'll notice. Um, sometimes people who are you know, making their way about during their day 
um, have this sort of shortened stride length, and that yeah. can totally throw off your balance as well. Yeah, and it takes you, like you said, it takes you longer to get places, which is frustrating. So, um, absolutely. So you told me why Agnes was developed, um, but. Uh, and we talked a little bit about how it's changed perception. But let me try that again with the goggles. So <laughs> let's talk a little bit about the goggles. Okay. So it's shortened my um, peripheral vision, yes. right? So that's like, I really can only see straight forward. If I want to see you, I'm almost having to turn Turning my full me. body. Mm -hmm. um, and then it is uh, very foggy, I yes. guess, clouded. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I can imagine, I mean, there's no words, but I can imagine if I had to read something it would be very difficult to read. Yes, um, absolutely. Which can be frustrating, I'm sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, so interestingly, so Agnes was developed for engineering students, mm -hmm. as I was telling you. Um, what it's it's been used for recently is um, different companies will come in, and even maybe their CEO will walk around in their own store, uh, work with their own products, wearing the suit, and have these really amazing insights. Um, about why um, it may not serve the aging population or why it's not accessible yeah. um, and make have made some really incredible changes based off of these experiences in the suit. Very interesting. All right, and so we have the chair here. Should yeah. I try sitting? I'm, I'm a little nervous. Like I'm You're a little nervous? Yeah, absolutely. So just, you know, so this All is right. something that you do every day probably without even thinking about it. Yep. So let's see what it's like now. For so you having put suit. the goggles on, now I have to like find the chair. Find the chair. And now Step I see why one. people, I've seen people do this, like look down to find it. And then kind of, oh my goodness, wow. And then, oh wow, I have to feel for the chair. Wow, that's, that's. That's really interesting. You did it. And you can imagine also what that might be like getting into your car. Oh my God. And lowering sort of from the Sideways, side. Sideways, yeah. So what I just did, I've seen people do, like I've actually seen an older adult like reach for the chair and kind of, you know, kind of make find it before they even attempt it. And then I just had, I had no sense of what, of why they were doing that and having put the suit on really changed my Wow, that my feeling for what they're what they're perceiving. So that's really interesting. All right, that's what great. else can we that's demonstrate? That's wonderful. Yeah. Well, um, I've brought some um, a few things for you to work All with right. here, sort of in terms of um, products. Yep. Um, so obviously, a lot of older adults use have to take a lot of pills. Absolutely. So, um, so something like opening a pill bottle. <laughs> All right. So this one says push down. So the, wow, the gloves make it hard. It's the gloves make it hard. And then closing it seems gonna be almost impossible. Let me put the goggles back on. All right, so now I gotta take my pills. Oh, yep, that's good. Nope, I'm not gonna open that again. Okay, but it's it's Thursday today, so okay. now you have to take your Thursday wow. pills if you would. So, without spilling all the rest. Without spilling all the rest on the floor, uh-huh. And then, yeah, there's no way I'm gonna be able to get my fingers in there. So what's happening in the with an older adult that's making, that's creating that, that lack of sensation, or, or can you talk a little bit about that? Absolutely. Yeah, I'm that gonna can, have to do this. That can be very ah. problematic um, on, a, on a very large scale, because you know, um, picking up a pill, grabbing something off a table, these are, are things that we do all day long. Yeah, all day yeah long. imagine cooking. Oh yeah. That gets very complicated. Yeah, that's a big one. Yeah, so again, again, something that I've seen people do mm -hmm. is when they can't get in there, they knock it into their hand. And then it's all over the place. And then it's everywhere, and then trying to get it back in, if you only need, wow, that was, yeah. that's interesting. Um, also something like getting dressed. Okay. Um, so we have oh. these <laughs> sort of neat little um, things to work with. So, you know, you can imagine you put your, on your slacks on yeah. or you're putting on your button down um, to see what it's like to, to get those open and closed. It's hard to see. Yes. Wow, yeah, this is, so we're putting it on. <laughs> and then you can't see. If you've lost sense, you know, right. your peripheral vision, you can't even Absolutely. see, kind of leaning back to try to see it. So to add to this loss of ability of, oh, wow. of feeling the buttons. Yep. To, yeah. And then I definitely don't think I'm gonna be able to button this set back up. <laughs> wow, what a struggle. Yeah. So this is, so you guys have gone everywhere and really shown this, shown the suit, right? And a lot of different people have experienced it. Okay. Absolutely, yeah. Um, Agnes has been, you can find Agnes a lot walking around Kendall Square um, in ah. Cambridge. Um, we had the pleasure of having George Decay come in 
um, and speak to someone who is wearing the Agnes suit about their experience. Um, we've also been working with another group at MIT, Open Style Lab, mm -hmm. who's working on making uh, assistive and stylish clothing. Um, so, so, so to solve something like, like this. Yep. Um, and then the work we've done with our sponsors has changed, um, has influenced products from pharmaceutical companies. Um, Agnes also influenced a large redesign of a pharmaceutical retailer, essentially from top to bottom after the experience that some wow. um, executives had walking around in Agnes in their own store and, and were unhappy with their experience and, um, and changed the whole store design, which was pretty incredible. So Agnes has been very successful. Yes, Agnes has been very successful, <laughs> absolutely. How long, or how long did it take to develop this um, suit? Talk us a little bit about that. Sure, um, so Agnes is sort of always um, in, in process. Okay. Um, we're always adding to the suit, we're always trying to think up um, new, new and interesting ways to to age people in, in under five minutes. Yeah. So I know that there's a there's a piece missing, the helmet. Can you talk a little bit about what that what that would have added, or what that does add? Sure. Um, so the helmet is usually what I would have attached um, these sort of blue cords in the front um, mm -hmm. to simulate spinal compression because okay. it does start at the top of the spine. So right now you just have it sort of from your shoulders yeah. down, um, but spinal compression really does start from here and. And works its way. And so it would have prevent. So can you so explain that a little bit more? So would have what? What would have? What would I have felt like? A, a lean back or a hunch over? Yeah, you would have felt sort of like um, a bowling over. Okay. And, and you know, this is something that we do, um, driving, sitting, um, working in front of our laptops. Very rarely do we yeah. take the time to sort of stretch yep. back. Um, and you know. Spinal compression, as well as the other um, restrictions of the suit, are not all inevitable. Mm -hmm. um, that's that's definitely a point that we want to make. You know, yeah. age um, isn't about birthdays; it's about management of disease and lifestyle. Yeah. Um, so, so these are things that can be prevented. And for everyone, it's different. So, Absolutely. you know, some people, I know, glaucoma creates that fuzziness, and there's different things that can happen. So, mm -hmm. there might be different aspects of it that affect different older adults. But the point of Agnes is really to. I mean, it's in the name, right? Show empathy or give empathy to people who haven't felt that experience, that those feelings yet. Wow, it's really heavy. It's really heavy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I talk with my arms a lot, and I'm like, <laughs> and now you no gesticulating. Yeah, yeah. Um, we we like to think that um, that aging is an extreme sport, and you know, as we change, mm. and even though we all change a little bit differently, our environment stays the same. So at the Age Lab, we are advocating to make changes to environment, um, make changes to products and services to um, make them more youthful, even though everyone isn't necessarily young. Okay. Well, anything else we can trial? I want to see, and is there anything, like, what else we could test yeah, on? Yeah, um, I brought a stress ball. I okay. don't know if you want to give that a squeeze, just, you know, to sort of simulate loss yep. of, of strength. Yeah. And I have some it's Legos because really they're fun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this, I, I don't know imagine. what it would be like to take those apart. Very difficult. So mm -hmm. this all makes it tough for people to play with their children, to the grandchildren, I guess. If, a lot of child toys are smaller, yes. little pieces. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Can you talk a little bit more about some of the products that have been changed due to someone wearing Agnes? Yeah. I don't know if you can, if there's a. Um, I can talk sort of, sort of broadly. Generally. Yep. Yeah. Um, so in addition to this um, redesign of this pharmaceutical retailer space, um, which included things like lowering shelves, um, shortening aisles, um, because no one hates anything more than getting to the end of that aisle, realizing it didn't have what you need, yep. and then doubling back maybe to the one over. Yep. Um, so shortened aisles, um, better signage, improved lighting. Um, stores for marketing have a tendency to use these, you know, these greens and these reds that are really hard for us to read. Oh. Um, so they took a look at what might be more legible oh, for people. Uh -huh. Um, so some other uh, products were a food manufacturing company uh, that was working on some, some low sugar and I think low sodium products, um, made the packaging easier to open, made it more accessible. Well, um, very interesting the work you guys are doing and it's been quite an experience to try this on. I can only imagine what it is like for bigger companies that are uh, putting out products or stores. So if you can believe it, our time is up. Uh, but thank you so much, Ariel, for coming and showing us Agnes. And we wish you all the, the best uh, in the future. And hopefully more companies are out there trying, all, trying her on. Yes, yes. absolutely. Right. Thank you. Thank you.
Read to a child today and spark a lifetime of ambition. Well, that was a lot of fun. Thanks, Julie, for showing me that. <laughs> um, so um, that was amazing. I can't wait to hear more about what happens with Agnes and the research that you guys do. Why don't you give our audience uh, a phone number or an email address where they could find out more about the research you guys are doing, maybe volunteer. I mean, I'm sure you guys have all sorts of interesting things going on. We are always looking for volunteers. Uh, for those interested in volunteering with on-road studies or off-road studies, please go to www.agelab.mit.edu. Again, that's www.agelab.mit.edu. Great. And you're looking for volunteers of all ages? Yes. All we're right. looking for volunteers of all ages um, in and around Boston. Great. Well, thanks again, and uh, we'll see you around. Thank you for having me. Uh, thank you for watching Seniors Count, brought to you by Mayor Martin J. Walsh and our Commissioner Emily Shea. To contact us, please call 617-635-4366 or the Mayor's 24-hour hotline at 617-635-4500. You can also email us at elderly at boston.gov and you can find us on Facebook. Take care and see you next time. And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. Oh,